the idea that you could have this like focused kind of single topic blog that you know for for an area that, or subject matter that wouldn't work as a magazine was really appealing to me because at the time no one had done a really successful gadget magazine I mean, they'd all kind of they were ones that would come and then they would go out of business uh, and no one was doing a gadget site so it seemed like well let's just do it it just kind of grew and 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 one of the nice things is that you know because the number of people that were reading the site was relatively small at the time um, I had a lot of freedom to find my voice and to figure out what writing style worked for me and also to unlearn a lot of the things that I learned as a journalist. Intellectually speaking, it seemed more interesting and it seemed like the web was going in this new direction, which was more bottom-up and social than top-down and editorial. You can be concise and witty and clever without being dumb um, in the way that, you know, and engage, you know, you can be engaging, but you don't have to like just appeal to that sort of lowest common denominator. And so I said, actually like the audience for this stuff is really smart and I want to kind of try to write up to the audience. I want to assume that the audience is knowledgeable and, and in the aggregate is smarter than me. When I did my C first CES, CES at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is the biggest tech <laughs> trade show in North America, um, I went by myself uh, when I was doing Gizmodo and um, over the course of five days I got 13 hours of sleep. I did three all-nighters. I had a challenge to myself that I was going to do more stories out of CES than CNET did and I did. I, mean, I think that's what gave blogging, you know, an edge in general is that you're able to, to be much more react. You can be able to react much more quickly and able to, you know, be part of this real time news flow that that the you know, other publications were having trouble catching up to. And I, I mean, I would joke that, you know, CNN would consider themselves to be new media because they were online. But as far as I was concerned, they were old media, and there was really, you know, they were, um, you know, the old way of doing things, which was having like, you know, big editorial staffs and having people have like write one story a day. And, you know, they looked at it like a newspaper. I think the trick is to be consistent and to force yourself to write every day or almost every day, preferably multiple times a day, um, and to try to become an expert in your field. Like, on, to be honest, like I didn't know as much about gadgets as I thought I did when I started, and I'd have my audience correct me a lot. When you want to build like a, a great platform or a great community around something, it helps to have a focus that people can coalesce around. And I think, um, you know, for us, gadgets, consumer electronics are, you know, it's an area that. We know well, but I think it's also an area where um, you know you have passionate experts who want to you know share and connect. I think people have this idea that like I got to start a blog and then I got to be you know on the front page of Dig. One of them, I guess, if there even is a front page anymore. But you know I have to get like tons of traffic right away and lots of attention or it's a failure. And you know my philosophy is like there's nothing wrong with taking six months or a year and just figuring things out and writing about things and, and making mistakes and having you know the luxury of making mistakes when you don't have you know 500,000 people already reading your site every month or 100,000 people reading your site every month. <laughs>